Glad to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Amen. Not glad to see all the folks that are missing. That's right. Amen. Some people say, well, you ought to be glad that you get about, you know, at least half of the people on Wednesday nights that you get on Sunday. No, I'm not happy about that. Because the Bible tells me that we're said for sake not the assembling of ourselves together, right. even more so than today. Amen. So why am I talking to y'all? Because there's a video camera right there and I'm hoping they're listening to me on it. That's right. Uh, yeah. Amen. 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 I know y'all get tired of hearing me say it. But I'm going to keep on saying it as long as we got people missing church. That's right. Glad to have my sister-in-law Rhoda with us tonight. Amen. Glad to have any young men. They used to be little, but they ain't little no more. Uh, Jasmine, she's done got pretty too and done got bigger. I mean, they're just growing up on us. So we're glad to have them with us tonight. I wish Jacob could have been with us too. We, uh, we love all these kids. Love my sister-in-law. She's a, she's a good one. I wouldn't charge her for, for another one. I need to <laughs> Y'all ready to worship the Lord tonight? Amen. You can come to this house tonight. Amen. If you don't, get a little bit. Let's worship. Thank you, Lord.
leaning on the everlasting home. Yes.
to him. Amen. Amen. And I don't have to worry about interference. I don't have to worry about drop call. Yes, sir. Amen. I was talking to somebody today on the phone in the school that sounds like you got your head in a bucket crick with paper the whole time. She said, I can barely hear you. I said, yeah, I just don't have a good connection. Right. But you know what? I don't have to say that anymore. Yeah. Because I've always got a crystal clear connection. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Brother Bob Joe, would you mind taking up the offering for us tonight? Thank you. I appreciate it. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, and your love. We ask you now, Lord, to please receive these offerings, these tithes, Lord. Just bless the giver, Lord. Bless our hearts, Lord, as we give up to you. Yes. And take this, Lord, and just let it be multiplied and used in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Yeah. Praise him. Give it all. Give it all to him. That's right. What did he do to you? Uh -huh. He gave it all. He gave it all. Yeah. Right. Sure did. Sure did. He gave it all. Where you go? Uh -huh. Amen. Right. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta make sure that we don't get lost in that. Man. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, pray.
Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I don't know if y'all had another one. Y'all. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you all for Yes, amen. 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 Well, it's Wednesday night, and I've been in trouble most of the day, so we're going to the Word. <laughs> Bible study. Preaching, teaching, preaching, whatever you want to call it. Churchy. <laughs> Turn with me to the book of 1 Peter. Hallelujah. Chapter number 4. We're going to look there at verses uh, 5 and 6. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 5. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. If you look back right there just a little ways, chapter 3, verse 19, it also says, By which also... He went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Tonight I want to talk to us for a little while about this, reconciliation. Reconciliation. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your spirit in this house. We thank you for this time together. Lord, I, I just want to step out of your way now, Lord, and let you speak. Speak to your people, Lord. Let us give us revelation in this, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. Let me be seated in the house of the Lord. We are going to have prayer for those that are sick. My mother's still sick. Sister Holly, uh, I think you still sick as far as I know. Sister uh, Russell is sick. Uh, we need to keep praying for Amy. We need to keep praying for Brother Freeman. Uh, Brother Steve is gone to Florida. We need traveling mercies on him. Sister Doris, is, uh, she's not able to be here. We're going to get her Sunday, though. We're going to make sure she's here Sunday. <laughs> I told her the other night, I said, I'm going to come get you Sunday morning. She said, all right. And I was thinking we had two services. I said, I'm going to kidnap you. I'm going to make you stay with me all day. <laughs> well, I mean, we only have one service. I said, well, I'm going to get it for one anyway. So, uh, we're going we're gonna to pray for them here in just a little bit. But I want the Lord to speak to us tonight. Yes, amen. I went to put my extensive amount of notes in the Bible a while ago and as I put it on first Peter three I noticed that I had another one that's still sticking over in the on the page on verse two or chapter two there. I said, Well, I'm not reading him, Peter. He's just taking me back there. So <coughs> reconciliation. I want to ask you something. The Bible tells us about Jesus going and preaching to the dead, preaching to those in prison. Right. Right? right. Who is he preaching to? Everyone. Let me ask you another question. Do you believe that you must repent, be baptized in Jesus' name for mission of sin and fill the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Do you believe that everybody is supposed to hear the gospel? That's right. Yeah. Now I ask you again, who was Jesus preaching to? Everyone. He wasn't preaching to the angels because the angels can't don't have repentance. That's right. He was preaching to those in prison. He was preaching to those who were dead. As he began speaking to me on this this morning and kind of going through this with me. 
showing me some things. It began to, things began to just come flooding in. All of those from Adam on until Christ died and was risen from the dead. All along, everything was pushed forward. Right. 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 They had no true repentance. Right. They gave sacrifices and offerings so that their sins would be pushed forward. That's right. Mm -hmm. Forward to what? Forward to the day that Christ could go back and preach. Repentance. The good news right. unto them in prison. Right. right. What does that what does that mean to us? And I was as the Lord kept showing me a lot of this and I've got a lot more to go through. I kept asking him. I see that and I see kind of some of the implications here, but what is the big overall picture? What is this? How is this going to edify this church? And how is this going to bring us into a greater understanding of what you've done for us and and you know what you have made available? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Verse 5, first, uh, first Peter chapter 4, verse 5, or verse 6 actually, says, For this cause was the gospel preached. For what? Because he's going to judge the quick or the live and the dead. He's going to judge. Everybody's going to be judged. That's right. So, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. Why? Because they had no occasion for that gospel to be preached to them right. until Jesus came. That's right. And what was he doing? He was reconciling. That's right. What does that word reconcile mean? That means to put things back in the proper perspective, proper order, to put things back as though they should be. Right. right. To reconcile means to put it back. That's right. So what was he doing? He had to go in. He had to be born of a virgin in the flesh. He had to die on a cross Amen. so that he could die as flesh and legally go to hell to where he could preach the gospel, the good news, to those that have never heard. Right. Why? Because it's that important that we hear that good news, that gospel, it's that important. But you know, but now, you know, we don't have to do, we don't have to have all of this. Some people tell you, oh, we don't have to have the Spirit. How else was Jesus going to go back and preach the Word? That's right. That's right. He okay. couldn't do it in flesh. And you can't receive it right. unless you've got the Spirit of God in you. They couldn't have received it. The ones back before him. So now we are afforded such a great thing because we have received that revelation. We have received the good news. All right. Amen. Hmm. For what cause? Because he's going to judge every one of us. According to men in the flesh, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. Even though they're dead. And turn with me over to John 5. I'm going to show you what Jesus said there. John chapter 5. I'm not going to go all over the place tonight. I'm just going to take you to a few books. John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, of the truth of the truth, I say unto you, that he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Now who hath everlasting life? Whoever believes on him, right? 
and shall not come into condemnation, which is judgment, but is passed from death into or unto life. Amen. Verily, verily, verse 25 of the truth of the truth. I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. They're going to live. But now, Brother Larry, that's just, he was just talking metaphorically. He was just talking about those that are dead in sin that walk on the face of this earth. He was talking about them, but he was not only talking about them. But what does that really matter to us? I asked the Lord, I said, so, you know, what, what's the grand scheme of things here? What, what does this really have to, how does this affect us knowing that you went back and preached to those? Because it shows us that he'll do whatever he has to, to try his best to get you to be saved. Amen. Amen. A lot of us get this idea in our head that, well, I'm doing the best I can and it may not be good enough. And what happens is the devil starts telling you, well, it's not good enough. You're not doing it right. God, he's standing up there with that uh, lightning bolt fixing to knock you down. But let me tell you right now, he is a, he is a, a God of judgment. He is a God that will judge. And he will send you to hell if that's what you want to do. But he is going to do everything that he can for you not to go to hell. Right. He's going to give you every opportunity. Amen. He's not right. going to leave you in a dark place, uneducated and alone, to die of your own contraptions and your own uh, desires and your own shortcomings. Amen. 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 Not if he's not going to leave you there just because you're uneducated. That's right. He went back. He died not just for the living, but for the dead. The Bible tells us that. That's right. That's right. All right. Who's going to rise first? The dead. the dead in Christ. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Those who have a heart for God. Those who have sold out to Him and His purpose and His will and His plan. All right. Amen. Amen. That's in Christ. That's right. Right. Just saying, I'm a Christian. That's not in Christ. That's in denial a lot of the time. <laughs> denying the word, denying the plan, denying the will. But I go to church. Praise God. That's good. Can't be saved without a preacher. Can't be saved without coming together. Spirit of God. You stay by yourself and He'll isolate you and He'll cut you out of the herd and the wolves will devour you. Amen. Verse 26 there says, For as the Father hath life in Himself, so hath He given to the Son that hath life in Himself. Now, we go back to look at something here. They who worship Him will worship Him in spirit, spirit, spirit and truth. <coughs> What's true? The gospel of the Lord is truth. So, if we're only worshiping what we see according to the drawings and according to the uh, picture images that you get in your mind of what Jesus looked like and what he did while he was in flesh, you're missing it. That's right. He done, he's done a lot more in spirit than he ever did in flesh. Amen. That's right. So yeah. what are we what are we doing then? What you know, why are we why are we looking at this? Why are we thinking about this? Because we need to reconcile. We need to put things back into the proper order. Just like he was trying to do. 
We need to put our minds back in the proper order that He created us to be. He created us for Him. To have a heart for Him. To be dedicated to Him. Amen. Amen. To want to be with Him. Yes. He wants us to be set apart, set aside. He wants us to be sold out to Him. I don't, I mean, I love you. I love everybody. But I'm not going to get you to heaven. That's right. That's right. That's right, man. That's right. It's between you and the Lord. That's right. It don't matter if you like me or don't like me. That's right. That's right. Come on. Because my... You know, you're liking or not liking on me one way or the other. Doesn't matter to your spirituality. That's right. That's right. It doesn't matter a bit to you being saved. That's right. Unless you don't like me real bad, and then you know unforgiveness, you damned anyway. So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but we gotta get over these things. Amen. Amen. But all these folks that you know, people say, well, it was uh, Abraham's bosom, it was paradise, it was whatever, the holding place, whatever you want to call it. People say, well, those folks, those are the ones that he went and preached to. That's right. But, if you look over with, in Romans 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. Romans 8, verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. We just heard that a minute ago, didn't we? The Savior said, mm -hmm. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So the law of the Spirit. Now most of the time we talk about law, we talk about the law, the written law that was set forth. Well now the Spirit wrote the law. God wrote it. Amen. Right. He wrote it. He put it forth. But now that's not exactly what this is talking about. This is the order of the Spirit. This is saying that it has made me free from the law of sin and death. That's right. I, because when I was preached the good news, when the gospel went forth and I heard it, right. Sister Sherry, at that time, then I became free when I accepted it. Right. And I said, this is the way I'm going to live. I became free from the law that said I must die. That's right. right. I became free of that law because now I entered into a new law, into a new order, into a new thing with the Spirit of God. That's right. And I, at that point, was able to be reconciled, put back to where I was supposed to be to start with. That's right. I was back in as a child of God. Right. Back as back as uh, I don't know how you say that. Be back just in the family of God, but to be back in the special order that He made creation. He made He didn't make it so that Adam would fall. He didn't make it that way. Right. That was man's fault. Right. Always, I know it, I say this every once in a while, but it always, I have to take up for him. Because if it wouldn't have been him, it would have been his son, or his grandson, or his great grandson. Somebody would have failed. Yeah. Because the devil, how I many ever has passed every temptation the devil stole at you? Don't hit each other in the head if you throw your hands up. Amen. 
So, somewhere or another we were going to fall. But the Lord knew what must be done to reconcile that situation. And He knows today what needed to be done to reconcile everything in this earth from the end to the beginning. That's right. That's right. And remember, He operates that way. Yeah. Amen. He knows the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. So we'll come down to verse 9. Same chapter, Romans 8. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. Yeah. How can I not be in the flesh when I'm still in the flesh? If I'm operating by the law of the Spirit, which made me free from death and from sin, that I'm no longer operating in this flesh. I am operating in the Spirit. Even though you see flesh, did I lose you? But, but if you see flesh rise up, Flesh rises up, you see that anger pour out. You see some sin come forth. Then what happens? Then sin abounds. But what can we do? We go back to the law of the Spirit that we've been told into our hearts and our minds the good news. And we can reconcile and come right back to the Spirit of God. Amen. That's right. That law that says we're free. But what if we go and turn toward that sinful way of life and we say, well, I kind of like it here. I'm kind of comfortable here. I think I'll just hang around a little while. You can go right back into that, folks. Correct. That's right. Do you mean that you no longer are full of the Spirit of God? God's not going to dwell where sin abounds. That's right. That's right. What do you think? What do you think he would preach today? He still is preaching today. He said he won't come until the whole world hears the word. How many people do you think died last week and never heard of Jesus? Sir. I asked the Lord today, I said, Lord, there must be somewhere revelation, prophets, somewhere to where you speak about this, about coming back and preaching again in the end. And I could not for the life of me remember or think of the place where it is. And as much as I stayed it through, I couldn't find it. So, what's our role? What are we supposed to be doing? I know y'all get quiet on them. They be losing you. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 9. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm just, I, I just looked at that. I looked at that wrong. I'm sorry. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. And then verse 10. Well, I didn't finish verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. That's right. Now, if no man has, if a man has not the Spirit of Christ in him, he's none of his. 
How do we get the Spirit of Christ to us? By the Holy Ghost. But how do you get the Holy Ghost? Repentance. Right? Repentance. And you cannot be saved without repentance. And without repentance, without a true change of heart saying, I'm done. I've tried this other way. I don't like it. I don't want it. When in the Lord, I feel peace. I feel joy. That's right. I, I get everything that I need from Him. That's right. And everything that the world's got to offer me mm -hmm. is chaos. That's right. right. It's anger. It's depression. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. That's Spirit of suicide. That's what I get from the world. But what I get from Him is worth me saying, I'm done. I'm turning my back on this sinful life. I'm going to turn to you, Lord. I'm going to follow you. I want the law of your Spirit written in me. Write it upon the table of my heart. Amen. Yeah. Mark me, because I'm yours. Amen. 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 Yes. So, Amen. I feel like I feel like that the Spirit of God has been beckoning, beckoning unto you ever since you took your first breath as a baby. Because that breath came from the Lord. That's right. It came from him. Right. And one day, he'll take that breath back. That's right. That's right. It may seem, my mind runs funny, I guess. It may just be my mind, but it may be, I feel like the Lord directed me over there to it. Anybody remember the story of Ezekiel? What did he do, Sister Tori? He spoke to a valley of dry bones. That's right. You think that was just, oh, that was just a dream. That was just a vision. But you think about what he said. The Lord told him, he said, speak and do this. He said, you think it could be life in me, Bob? He right. said, I don't know it's Lord. That's right. He said, well, speak and do it. And he began to prophesy to them bones. And the Bible says that they grew sinews. That's right. Muscles. That's right. Muscles. That's right. And they stood up. That's but right. there was no life in them. That's right. Until the Lord told him, said, prophesy to the wind. The wind. <laughs> Breath of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. What was that? A valley of dry bones. And the Bible specified that they were very dry. Amen. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul, I believe it was <clears throat> Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 uh, Verse 19 says For it pleased the Father that in him should all fools dwell and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were some sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, 
Yet now hath he reconciled. Amen. Amen. Right. Then the world, sin. That's right. Everything is about God. That's right. It's going to devil your mind. It's going to try to confuse you. That's right. It's going to try to tear you down. Amen. That's why I think the Lord is showing us this tonight. The fact that He is reconciled. That's right. That He's been doing. Right. This isn't a new thing. Right. He's trying to set back in order what the devil, the world, and sin has taken from Him. That's right. right. He wants you back. That's right. And He doesn't want you to ever be lost again. That's right. And he will not. He, you remember he said he'd leave the 99 to go after the one. That's right. right. He'll come to you. He'll come after you. He'll be there when you least expect him, but you most need him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Where was that? Verse 21. 21. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. The only way that you would ever be holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight is for him to die. That's right. Right. Come on. What happened? The prophets preached his death Years before he ever died. That's right. Right. Now here it is, 2,000 plus years later, after his death, and we're still preaching the good news. Amen. Amen. Right. And it's just as important and viable today as it was when Isaiah preached. Amen. As right. it was when David preached. As right. it was when Daniel preached. Amen. Right. Amen. They all talk about the coming of the Savior. That's they right. all talk about the reconciliation of the world. That's right. That's right. Through what? The only name. That's right, Jesus. Under heaven. Right. Given among me. Whereby we must be saved. Be saved. Amen. That's right, Jesus. Christ. We must be. We were destined. To have this word written in our heart. We were destined to be the bride of Christ. That's right. So what happens to the ones that don't want it? Do you really believe that when he went back to hell and preached the gospel, did it say that he had a 100% revival? How many still said no? To the Savior. How many said, I don't want that? How could you do that? Uh -huh. Evidently, they wasn't tasting hell at the time. Amen. Come on. So there is a hell. That's right. Amen. Amen. There's a heaven. There is a hell. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Yeah. Sure as I'm saving you. And he's preaching this good news to everyone so that no one will taste it. That's right. So no one will see it. How are we going to miss it? If you continue, verse 23, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, What's the hope of the gospel? The hope of the good news is that exactly what has been said will come forth. That's the hope. We have faith that that's going to happen. As a child of God. That's, what, that's why we're sitting here. Because we have faith that the word of God is true. That it's infallible. That it will come to pass. Amen. And if we follow it, then we will see salvation. We will see eternity. We will look into the face of the Lord. Amen. 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 
And you'll hear him say, well done. My good and faithful servant. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me finish the rest of that verse. If you be continue in the faith, granted and settled, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Wait a minute. Paul oh, dead. How do they know every creature under heaven was preached to the gospel? No man can do it. That's right. So who's doing it? The Spirit. That's right. Amen. You think it's me that gets up here and preaches? Nope. No. I'm but a conduit. Yeah, that's right. Well, amen. If it's me, we're in trouble. Amen. The Spirit expressly speaks. Amen. <laughs> The right. Spirit brings forth the Word. That's right. Paul said that everything under heaven, every creature which is under heaven, that would have to be, Sister Guthrie, that would have to be from the beginning to the end. That's right. And Paul said it. Paul may have it. Because Paul was full of the Spirit. And the Lord may have quickened right. him visions. Right. We never know. We get to heaven, we get Right. Amen. Amen. If you go to heaven, it won't matter no way. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go there. No. <coughs> I, don't want, I don't want the Lord to have to come preach to me. Like he did those lost souls, those souls that were in prison. What is prison? It's bondage. Anybody in bondage? If you are, I can recommend you to somebody that can help it. Amen. They can take it away. Amen. It's not Dr. Phil. It's not Dr. Oz. It's not even Dr. Jeffers. It's my father. Amen. Amen. So I've got y'all all confused and lost tonight, ain't I? <laughs> nah, no, sir. The Lord wants us to know this one simple thing, and that's what I feel that I can know. He wants us to know that He's willing to do whatever is necessary for you to be saved. That's right, amen. 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 He loves you that much. He's willing to do whatever it takes. Amen. But He's amen. not going to make you. No. That is up to you. That's right. That's right. That ball is in your court. That's right. If you want Him, He's there. That's right. He's here. Amen. amen. He'll share, the, he'll share the good news with you. He'll place His Spirit upon you and in you. Amen. Amen. Why would I want the Spirit of God so strong? Why would I want that? You know why, Sister Timothy? Because the Bible says we can't make it through this life without Him. We can't direct our own steps. Right. We don't know what to do or where to go. Even with the Spirit, sometimes it can be confusing even for somebody like Paul. He says, well, I will do good. I find a new law in my memory. Causes me to do bad. Amen. That's right. 
reconciliation, putting things back to the right order, or to the right place, can only be done by the Spirit. Amen. You can't do it yourself. That's right. Your friends can't do it. Right. Your pastor can't do it. That's right. It takes the Spirit of God. Amen. And without the Spirit of God, you're going to be a total mess the rest of your walk on this earth. And when you die, you're going to really be in a mess. Yeah, that's right. Why? We've got to have the Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's not just a good idea. It's not just something that, you know, that be swelled. We can't just pick him up and lay him down when we want to either. That's right. We gotta walk with him. We gotta talk with him. Amen. Y'all know only one time in the book did it say that a man walked with God and he was not. That was Enoch. Enoch had a walk with God. He talked with God. He had a relationship with God. And God loved him enough. He said, I'll not make, make you, I'll make it where you don't have to see that. That's right. Wow. That was a long time before Jesus died. But you know what Jesus did? When he went to hell and preached, he came back and was risen from the dead. He said, I love you so much, I'm going to make sure you don't ever have to taste death. Amen. Amen. Enoch walked with him. That's right. And talked with him. He spent all his time with him. And God loved him. That's right. David was a man after God's own heart, but God didn't take David out. That's right. That's right. He didn't translate him. He loved Elijah. Took him out of the world, man. That's right. But you know what? Is y'all seen everything if you ever read what all Elijah's done? Done a lot more than Enoch did, from what I remember hearing. <laughs> didn't hear a whole lot about Enoch. Guess he was all the time with God. He didn't, didn't have time to write stories about him. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Amen. But you know, Elijah, as much as he done, as much as he was known for it and had no worthy things to go on, Jesus said, I died for you That's right. so that you won't have to taste death. My God. Do you see how important that reconciliation was to all of us and still is today? Amen. Amen. Right. He's setting it back straight. He's setting it straight. And he loves us enough that he said, I won't make you have to taste this. Oh, you will die in this flesh. The Bible says it's pointed out that every man wants to die. That's right. Man. You die in this flesh. That's this right. old flesh ain't got the glorified mud ball anyway. We're just dirt. That's right. Oh, well. We'll go back to dirt. That's right. But this spirit, Jesus died so that he could go and have authority and he can preach the good news. Amen. What's the good news? That he's the king. Amen. Amen. That he's the king. That he's the one that loved you enough. That he gave everything for you. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God knows what He's doing. Yes, He does. I don't. God knows who I'm talking to tonight. Amen. Amen. He's talking to tonight. I don't. 
And don't forget that you're here tonight simply because of reconciliation. Amen. He's trying his best to bring us back to the point where he created us in right. the garden. Amen. He wants us back to that place where we want to spend time with Him, where we want to walk with Him and talk right. with Him, where we love Him and He loves us. Amen. He's trying His best to get us back to that place. Right. Amen. He's trying His best. Don't fight Him. Amen. Accept what He's wanting to do. Amen. Let Him be your Man. That's right. Come on. Thank you, Ray. Let's pray. Let's pray. I mean, let's just don't. Thank you. Let's, let's just pray. Thank you. Spirit's calling to us tonight. The Lord is, the Lord is in this place tonight. He's here. He's trying to reconcile. Hallelujah. Don't be one of those that rejects His word. Don't be one of those that says, I, I'm just not ready for it right now. I'm just not, you don't know what's going on with me. I'm just not ready to receive that. Push everything out of the way that you have to, but let him do the work that he wants to do in you tonight. Let him bring you back to a place where that you where he wants you to be. You might say, Well, I've never been there before, it doesn't matter. It's a perfect place when it's God's place. We want to bring our minds back into him, back into his law, into the law of the spirit. Bring our hearts on subjection. I can stand up here and preach all I want to about the fact that the world's coming to an end. Jesus is coming. Everything's showing that the world's fixed an end. But that doesn't matter to a hill of beans. If you don't purpose in your mind that I'm going to believe Him and I'm going to receive Him and I'm going to do everything that I need to do to let Him speak into me what needs to be spoke, what needs to be preached so that I can receive from Him the salvation and the law of the order of the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 H
come together and pray we can. If you want to. This ain't about us. It ain't about nobody in here. It's about you and the Lord. If you need prayer, we're praying with you. We'll pray for you. The Spirit will direct us. We don't even have to call the name of nobody else. Reconciliation will come if you will let it. You will set it back in order. We must make up our minds that we want God's will and not our own. Satai no poho I feel an urgency in the Holy Ghost for reconciliation today. Don't it all that long. Do a work right now. Let him restore mind. Let him restore joy. Let him restore happiness. <laughs>
You gonna pray for River? You gonna pray for me too? You gonna pray for Sister Jewel? Cause she's gonna put up with all of them. I throw that in there just for you, sis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love you, brother. <laughs> and, uh, Dom. Well, huh? Dom. Yes, we want Dom to be back in here, too. Okay. And, uh, I also want to pray for all those we should pray for. Right. And these right. two. Yeah. Them two there, too. That's two more she's got to put up with. <laughs> Sister Jewel, she needs strength on the brother, brother Kim. <laughs> uh, anybody remember, else? Let's remember Sister Guthrie's family too in yep. Arkansas. Sister Ginger, and uh, we need to remember the brother's uh, family in Sister Arkansas. Sister Guthrie's uh, brother, the brother, brother-in-law, brother. Yeah. The one, uh, brother-in-law, brother-in-law. Yeah. Yeah, and then we need to remember them. And uh, this coronavirus is dying. Amen. I'm not worried about what the news said. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, this Amen. coronavirus yeah. is dying. Amen. Amen. The devil is alive. Amen. I said it's dying. I'm being like my father. I'm speaking as though it were. Yeah. It is. Amen. Jesus' name. Anybody else? Me. Brother Bob Joe. Anybody else? Sister Tori. There was a man who came to work today. His name is Jimmy. He's. Let's pray for him. Came to me out of the blue and started talking to me and just started crying on me. Amen. Pray for him. Amen. Sure will. Anybody else? Dr. Cole? A friend of mine, him and his wife, they uh, they recently got divorced or going through divorce and uh, he's just in a uh, really, really dark place. And uh, he's not a church girl. I've been trying to get him to come to church with me for years, but uh, he needs prayer, he needs something. Amen. 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 God pulled him out of it. That's right. Amen. You need unspoken requests tonight. Let's stand together. Let's take these needs to the Lord tonight. Brother Thomas, I want you, if you would, to come up there and lay hands on Brother Bob Joe and Sister Jewel. Brother Guthrie, if you don't care to step over there with him, you're going to be scared. Sister Jewel's still having some health problems. And she needs enough touch. Here, Brother Scary, take this back there. Y'all want to hear Brother Bobby Joe? Brother Bobby Joe, you just turn around there and pray with him on the table. We're just going. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Lord, Thank you. we claim victory in these bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your healing virtue flow to the top of their heads, to the soles of their feet, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. There's a need in these bodies right now. We claim it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit to come against you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let it be done this day for your glory, for your honor, and your praise. Lord, we come to you right now for all those, Lord, that are sick and afflicted in this place, Lord. We come together right now, Lord, for everyone who has need. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your eyes be clear. Let depression be bound in the name of Jesus. Let everything be done according to your will, Lord, according to your way. In Jesus' name, let peace abound. Hallelujah. Let the rivers abound.
with the Holy Ghost movement. You miss this in Jesus' name.